A while ago, I made a video claiming that a lot of the planar flattening jigs that I've seen where the cleat is in the back is backwards. I think the cleat should be in front. And I think there's a lot of confusion around what is safe and what is not safe when it comes to these kinds of jigs. So let's take a moment to talk about how a planer works and then think about safety within that context. So let's briefly review how a thickness planer works, or at least how this thickness planer and many other thickness planers work. There is above the bed, uh, under this machine here, three contact points with the board. There is a in-feed roller, an out-feed roller, and a spinning cutter head. Both these two rollers are spinning in this direction so that when they come in contact with the board, they are going to help push that board forward and feed it through uh, the thickness planer. There is a spinning cutter head that is spinning in the opposite direction and pushing against the motion of the board going through. But it, that's what's doing all the hard work here. Is it's, doing the, it's cutting the board and getting it to a consistent thickness. So let's see how this works. You got this. Again, this is under the planer here, just above the bed. You by hand push the board into the planer until it engages with that first roller. That first roller kind of pinches it to the bed that it's on and it has grip on it and it will, at that point, start feeding the board by itself. At that point, you, you should not be pushing the board by hand. At a certain point, the in-feed roller will push it to the spinning cutter head. Again, that's spinning in the opposite direction and we start cutting the board at that point. And then at another point, it'll finally come in contact with the out-feed roller and it'll continue pushing the board forward it will eventually lose contact with the front roller, which is why that outfeed roller is important so that it can finish the cut as the board exits the, the thickness planer itself. Now, I wanna emphasize something that's really important here. During normal operation of a thickness planer, there is no backstop, there is no cleat in the back. There is just a board out in the open and after you get it to engage with the first roller, it's hands off, there is nothing in the back. Just, I wanna emphasize that there is nothing in the back and the reason why there's nothing in the back is because you've got rollers that are that have a strong grip on the board, preventing it from kicking back. So what would happen if I had this setting too low? If I had this lowered too far low to the bed and I pushed the board through? Well, in my experience, two things have happened in the past. Uh, one is the board goes in, the roller catches it just fine, sends it through to the cutter head, it engages with the cutter head for a little bit, and then very quickly you hear the kinds of noise where it's the machine telling you it's trying to work too hard, and I've seen the board, I see one, one of two things happen. The board gets stuck because there's too much friction with the cutter head that it can't overcome, the rollers can't overcome that friction to keep pushing the board forward. So they basically, it halts right there. I hear it, I very quickly slap the stop button, the machine turns off, I raise up the bed and pull the thing out and I get disappointed about how my board is ruined. So that's, that's one thing that can happen. The second thing that can happen is more or less the same thing, but instead of me shutting it down, the breaker trips because there's a there's a power surge and what the, the, the machine is trying to do is trying to do too much work in too uh, short of a period of time and it's the same thing at that point the board has stopped i now have to raise the machine back out the board and then i proceed forward with the rest of my project what has never happened to me and it just doesn't mean that it doesn't hasn't happened to anyone else but what hasn't happened to me is the cutter head has so much backward force against the board that it not only overcomes the friction of the front roller or even the back roller if both are engaged. I haven't seen it overcome the friction of the front roller to the point where it spits it out or even shoots it out. Again, there's a roller there that is pinching the board to the bed and just that's, <laughs> I just have never seen a cutter head spit out a board with that much surface area and friction against that board in that direction at all. So again, I wanna emphasize the fact that during normal operation, it is safe to not have a backstop to catch kickback. Yeah. So can a thickest planer ever in any circumstances kick out wood and effectively have kickback in and put you at risk? Yes, absolutely. I've seen it in two instances. One instance is because I wasn't adhering to the advice within the, the manual of my DeWalt thickness planer. Again, as a prop, two rollers here. I've got a, uh, the spinning cutter head in the middle. And they say, for good reason, make sure the board is long enough uh, to go through the planer. Uh, I'll have to go look up uh, within the manual. I think it's something like 12 or 13 inches. Make sure it's got that much length. This board is not that long. And what would happen if you were to uh, send this board through the thickness planer, it would engage with the first roller, it would engage with the cutting head, and then before it makes contact with the last roller, it loses contact with the first roller, and now you've got a spinning cutter head moving at 10,000 RPM just beating up on this board that has no, no nothing to hold it down 
and I've seen that thing just shoot out the side, the back. It happened so quickly. I don't know what direction it came out, but it came out and that's like a touching the hot stove situation. I have never since sent through a board that is too short because now I understand better how I think this planer works. You need to send through boards that will, you're guaranteed to have more than enough room to engage with both rollers at the same time. Um, if your boards aren't that long, then that board's gonna get chewed up and spit out and you don't know where it's going or what damage it's going to do. The second time I've had little pieces of wood that come out of the thickness planer is when I'm planning an ingrain cutting board. So I'll have a, a cutting board that is long enough, uh, but with an ingrain board, the, the, the grain is pointed up like this. It's obviously not this tall, but the grain points up. And when you've got uh, grain at the very end of the board that isn't supported, then I've seen flakes get shot out the back of that. Now, again, it, planning in grain, uh, be very careful. Like default to not doing it and finding a different way. Default to maybe using a drum sander or a, a router flattening jig. Um, I've done in grain boards through my thickness planer in a very safe way. I've done maybe 20 or 30 in grain boards. So at this point, like I understand take extremely shallow passes a 64th of an inch at a time or less. Um, I now understand how to reinforce the ingrain within my board. Uh, so if you want to be safe, just don't play an ingrain. If you want to kind of roll the dice a little bit and make sure you're being safe, take off extremely little amounts of wood as you pass it through. But yeah, for those two instances, having pieces that are too short or having ingrain pointed up are the only two instances when I've had wood pop out of my thickness planer um, and effectively count as kickback. All right, let's get to the punchline on why, on why the having the cleat in the back of a planar flattening jig is not only backwards, but actually potentially less safe. So again, let's review. We've got a board that's not perfectly flat. You know that by pushing on opposite corners of the board. So this would be a good candidate because it's long enough to go through a planar flattening jig. The way I've seen other people recommend this work is you have the cleat in the back, push it right up against there, you then shim it, Use hot glue for your shims, that's fine. I got nothing personal against hot glue. I just think with a front cleated jig, uh, it's unnecessary, but let's say the the shims are hot glued or painter, painter's tape is, is holding it down. And now you've got a board that is uh, securely flat. It's not gonna wobble as it goes through, in theory. You feed this jig under the planer and engages with the first roller. That first roller is gonna put an immense amount of pressure down and pinch the board to the bed and start feeding it through. It's possible that this, this whole process, maybe there's too much friction on your, the actual bed of your planer, uh, that this doesn't wanna move through very easily, or that the, you just didn't do a good job of, of shimming the board. It's possible for that front planer to pull this away off the backstop. Uh, and that's, that's actually not great. It already defeats the purpose of having the backstop in the back Potentially, we'll talk about a safety concern in a second here, but it pulls it off the backstop already because at the end of the day, hot glue is not 100% rigid. It's got some elasticity to it and uh, that can happen. But here's a, a scenario I wanna walk you through. Let's say that front roller applies so much pressure such that it pulls it off the back cleat there. Let's imagine this shim is glued down and now the board is off the shims, at least one of the shims. Now imagine that front planer or the front roller is applying pressure in such a way and the board is twisted in such a way that this front corner pops up a little bit and it pops up too much where it's about to engage with the cutter head. What's going to happen when that popped up corner that's off the shim that is being forced to be popped up because that front roller made it do with that. What's going to happen when that fr front corner engages with a cutter, a cutting head that's spinning at 10,000 RPM? Best case, nothing. Best case, it shaves off a little bit, the whole thing runs through and everyone is fine and no one gets hurt. Worst case, and imagining a world where like kickback is possible, where it's possible to overcome the friction of the roller head, let's imagine that's possible, then this is going to kick back and hit there, but that's not the, the end of the day. That's not the end of the, the story here because it may bounce back or even if it doesn't bounce back, it's still in contact with the front roller and it's gonna go back for a second serving and it's gonna hit the cutter head again. And this is all going to happen in a matter of a few hundred milliseconds. Like this is sub-second bouncing we're gonna have between this back cleat and this spinning cutter head that's spinning at 10,000 RPM. This could not be safe. 
I, I just don't think I just don't think it's a good idea. I actually don't think that it's actually possible. I don't think it's terribly possible to overcome the uh, friction against that front roller. At least it's not going to shoot out like that. But if it is going to shoot out, I'd actually prefer this back cleat not be there so it shoots out uh, straight out rather than stopping and going back for another run through the planer. Like that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Now let's imagine the cleat is in front. Put the board that you want to flatten right up against it. You shim it. If you want to use the glue, that's great. If you don't, that's also great. Why? Because as we look at this, this is getting run through the planer. The front roller of the planer is going to grab the board. Let's say it's the same scenario. For some reason, that planer jolts it forward too much. And in the previous case, where it would have pulled it off of that black back cleat, in this case, if you have a sudden jolt forward, there's there's no there's no distance for it to move. Like it is stuck against this cleat. And there's there's it's I'll just say it like this. It is much more difficult to pull off the shims if there's a cleat right here that physically prevents it from moving forward. Now, that doesn't mean it can't maybe twist a little bit and, and do something else, but it is not gonna pull off from the, from the shims before it engage, engages with the, the uh, cutter head. Before I end this video, I wanna emphasize something that's, that's extremely important. If you were to go, so I've got a DeWalt thickness planer. If I were to go to DeWalt HQ and I walked into their building and said, hey, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. What do you, DeWalt representative, think is safer? Cleat in the front or cleat in the back? The response I would expect to get is neither. Like we are outside of the territory of what the manual for these machines advises already. And nowhere in the manual will you find, create your own custom flattening jig and put the cleat here versus there. Like we're already in, the, in this, this territory where we are outside of the boundaries of what DeWalt deems safe. So I just wanna make that very clear. If you think having a cleat in the front is not safe, if you have a cleat in the back, it's also not safe for those same reasons. We are outside of the bounds of the manual of this potentially dangerous machine. So keep that in mind. With that in mind, given we're outside of that, we're in, we're in that territory of like, we're just doing it on our own and we're just gonna make it work because I don't have a jointer. Well, given you're in that territory, then a few things to keep in mind. Have hearing protection, have eye protection. Don't stand directly behind the planer bed on the assumption that no matter what I just told you right now, always assume that the board can shoot out like a bullet. Despite everything I said in this video, make that assumption. Assume it'll shoot out like a bullet. Don't put yourself in the line of fire. Don't put anything you wouldn't want destroyed in the, in the line of fire. Again, I don't think it's very likely or could happen depending on the, the state of your rollers, but always assume with these big machines that you're using, kickback will happen and can happen and get out of the way. Like, <laughs> don't stand there, assume it'll happen. That's how you can be safe with a thickness planer and having a, a thickness or a planer flattening jig at the same time. So actually there was this one time where I did have kickback and it was the most terrifying experience I've ever seen. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting my channel by subscribing, buying a super thanks, or become a channel member where you can watch exclusive content and gain access to videos before they are publicly available. Thanks for your support.